Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to see what a type ahead block is and how we can use it in Omni Studio. A type ahead block is basically like a search bar that you see in Google. Whatever you type in, it shows suggestions related to the same. Let's move on and see what do we need to create a type ahead block in the Omni script. First of all, we would need a data raptor. This data raptor is going to fetch the data that we will be showing in the type ahead block. Let's fetch the record from the account object and for the filtering criteria we are going to take name and since we want our records to be visible, I mean suggest suggestions should be visible, when some part of the name is matching with the actual name. So for that reason, we are not going to use equals to, we are going to use like operator here. And this would be equal to some key that we will be sending from the Omni script. So let's go to the output. And let's map the extract JSON path with the output. So for now, we are only going to fetch uh, the ID name. So let's preview it once. So this is going to be the key and let's get the value as admin okay let's see what we get when we only put in ac so we're getting multiple records all right let's go ahead and create an omni script This is our OmniScript designer and we are going to add one element in the step one and that is going to be our type ahead block. So you can search ahead and drag and drop the type ahead block over here. Now we have to configure this.
actually let's bring in the data adapter first and you have to fetch this data adapter extract action into this block right there and now we can simply select the data adapter that we have created and very important thing to notice is this is a type ahead one uh, the block that is going to fetch uh, the records based on the key that we are typing in over here so whatever you type in this box is going to be considered as the key for the data after extract action so in the input parameter of the data after extract action you have to configure it like that so the data source is going to be the type ahead and the filter value that is going to be used in the data after extraction is going to be the key and that is how we are configuring the input parameters so key is the key that is being used in the data after extract action and type ahead one is the source of the data that we are getting from the home script Uh, let's go ahead and try to check it out. Okay, let's write something over here. Okay, we are writing and we are straight away getting the JSON, which is not the required output. So we need to map it with the field that we want to see in the suggestion. So as soon as we are writing Acme, if we want to see the names displayed in the suggestions, we would have to do it that way. So we go back into the design. And we click on the type ahead block. And this is the property that we need to fill in. And we are going to use the name as our type ahead key. Now if you go back to the data after extract, you would see that this is the key that we are sending as the name. So we are going to use the same as the suggestion key in our type ahead block. So I have put in name over here. Let's try and see how it works. Alright, so the data JSON is not fetching any data as of now. As soon as we try to write something over here, we are getting few records in the response data as you can see. Let's try to write something like this. So that is the reason we used like operator and not equals to because we want it to be used as a substring of the name. So whatever is matching, wherever it is matching in the beginning or at the end or in the middle of the string, it's going to match it and bring it up. All right. Now a few more things to note here is there, there, there is a pencil sign if you can see and if we enable the edit mode we would be able to see the fields in the editable mode. So we are only sending two fields as of now as soon as I write something over here it's going to map the data with another field but we have to map the field first as you can see there is no other fields coming onto the screen so first we will 
simply drag and drop a text input over here please keep in mind that you have to drag and drop this text element inside the type ahead block let's name it name if you keep the name of the data node that you are sending from the data adapter and the uh, input text same as the name of the node you won't need any kind of binding it will automatically show up so let's go ahead and preview it see the text one element is already visible that is because we have uh, made that boolean true which said edit mode so if we write anything it's going to show the name over here actually it would have made more sense if i would have mapped it with id now let's check other options out actually let's name it id so you'll be able to see id in this field Okay, now if you this is the calling frequency, so every 300 milliseconds is going to call to the database and going to fetch the records based on the input that you have provided. If the edit mode is on, you you would be able to see these uh, added text fields. And if it is off, you would have to click on this pencil icon in order to be ma make these uh, text elements visible. You can also hide the edit button. Uh, let's first uh, demonstrate how you can get the ID fields. Okay. As soon as I write something and select something, the ID is not being visible over here, so you can just click on this and you will get the fields which are in the editable mode. Now if you select a hide edit button, then the data will be fetched and you can use it in the calculations for the end of the but it won't be visible on the type ahead layout in order for you to edit it. So you won't be able to edit any data. Let's see how that works. Okay, so I'm again typing in something and there is no button as such to edit the related fields with this record. Nor you can see any uh, fields popping up onto the screen. But if you see the data JSON, uh, the ID is being populated in the type ahead one. So you can use it to show some data that you don't want to show in editable mode. You can simply bind it with other value. So let's see how we can do that. So what you can do is simply drag and drop or drag and drop a text element, rich text or something. So just drag and drop it outside the type ahead block and we can simply show the value that the ID is going to bring. That is how you can show the, the, the related fields of the record in a non-editable mode. There it is and it is non-editable. All right. So there are a lot of configurations possible over here. We will talk about a few of them in the later videos. There are many ways of getting data into the type ahead suggestions. One way was the data raptor extract action that we have used in this video. The other option is to consume the data JSON of the Omniscript itself. We will explore that in the next video.
Until then, thanks for watching and do like, share and subscribe if it helps you.